Hello and welcome to Wally Bois. Well, I want to show you how you can join two pieces of timber together, end on, and it'll be strong. And no, I'm not going to show you how to. Whack a bit of glue on there, then whack a bit of glue on there, and butt joint them together. Because that isn't strong. No, it will fail. You'll have a bust joint. Because end grain to end grain does not glue together very well. Long grain to long grain does. So what I'm going to show you is how to make a simple scarf joint jig for the table saw. Or it could even be used on the band saw. Simples. That it is. So over to him. Oh. I don't know where I found him. But we're going to make a scarf joint jig. So we don't have to butt our timber together. And we don't have to lap joint it, no. But we're going to make a 1 in 6 scarf joint jig. So we measure the thickness of our piece of wood. And we times it by 6. In this case it's 25 millimetres, 1 inch, by 150 millimetres, 6 inches. And we mark it onto the piece of wood. And we draw a line. We use that line as a visual guide onto the piece of timber that is going to be our jig. So I line it up at the edge, and now I can draw a line down the side of that piece of timber. Oh, okay. You see, it hasn't got to be spot on accurate, no. It's just got to do a job. How are we going to cut to that line? We could use my distant panel saw. Yeah, um, yeah, okay, maybe not. I've got a better idea. We're going to use a piece of timber, place it onto that line, and nail it into place. Only temporary, mind. And now we've got something else to line up against the fence of the table saw. But the actual piece of timber that's going to be our jig. Well, that's cut at an angle. Oh, look at that, the angle of the dangle. Oh, so we have to pull out the old nails. We don't want them, no. And now we've got a one in six angle. And that is going to become our jig. But there's more to do as yet that there is. I purchased two hand grips for this job. So we're making the jig to suit these grips. You'll have to make the jig to suit your grips. But we need something for the grips to grip against. To grip the piece of wood that we want to have the scarf joint on. So we can grip it onto the jig itself. We're marking it so we can cut out a clearance for the shoes of the clamps. Well we took it over to the scroll saw to cut out those clearance slots for the hand grips or hand clamps or whatever you like to call them it's one and now on to the second there you go oh, oh nearly there right your fingers oh it's done oh that looks like a good one do you get the idea so we're going to use a bit of glue in this case I'm just using a bit of PVA I like to use my glue spreader which is actually a wallpaper joint roller with a bit of tape on it so you can easily clean the roller by pulling the tape off it just makes the job a lot easier so I put one nail in just to hold it into place and then I put the extra nails in once I know I've got it in a good position but we've got to trim the ends we've got that big long bit no so they've got to go look Oop, there you go oh snip 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 it's gone job's good oh but it's not finished yet no oh okay it needs a handle. So we're going to fix the handle just like so. And it'll be smashing it, it will. Absolutely smashing. But first of all, we need to mark where we want our screw holes. Our clearance holes for the screws. And I'm only guesstimating this. It's, it's not rocket science. So we're drilling the holes through first, from the face from the top, and get the countersink drill and countersink the holes so the screws are way below the surface see so sand off any little splinters and make it all nice and tactile change the bit over we put in the screwdriver bit oh okay and we're going to apply a bit of glue then we'll flip it over and screw the handle on now you could use dowels or domino dowler to fix the handle but it's a bit pointless really oh so now we have a nice solid handle so we're going to take that over to the table saw and now cut our pieces of timber that are going to have the splice on them. As you can see, 
The jig fits up neatly against your fence of your saw. The distance from the fence to the blade is only just missing the jig. Before we start the saw, we must make sure it is perpendicular to the table saw top. And the same will apply if you're using a band saw. So we're making that cut slow and steady. Now I'm about to do something you shouldn't do, is pull the piece back out in the same direction for which you entered the blade. Don't do it, no. So now we're going to clamp the second piece of timber to the jig. The saw's still running. But this time we're going to do it slightly different. We're passing the jig past the saw blade as before. But we don't pull the jig back with the timber on, no. We turn the saw off. See, the cut has already been made. The angle was correct. If you pull your workpiece back, you could damage your cut and it will make for a bad joint. But as you can see, that looks pretty darn perfect so far. So we're going to take it back to the bench and glue it together to demonstrate the scarf joint in action. <gasps> okay. So we're at the bench and the next job is to glue the two pieces of timber ready to be clamped together. Oh, okay. So now we apply the glue and we use the wallpaper roller spreader. Well, that's what I use it for to spread the glue. Oh, it's ready now to be clamped together. Okay. Now you don't need too much pressure if your joints are good. And if you made the jig just like I just showed you, they will be. Oh, I suppose it's back to him. So there you go. If you want to glue two pieces of wood together, use a scarf joint and make your life a darn sight easier by making a jig for the table saw. And like I said, it will also work on the band saw. Oh, okay. It's a universal scarf joint jig, wouldn't you say? Anyway, before you go, go, wouldn't you be most kind to click like and subscribe and maybe the little bell icon because then you get a warm fuzzy feeling in your pocket every time I upload another video. And I would hope you'd be excited about that. Oh, okay, I hope so. But never mind. Ta-ta.